thank you so much sir, for this blessed hour of worship as we are going to meditate upon your word open our hearts and mind to receive your precious word in our life out and of all our hearts be acceptable to you o lord our help our redeemer and savior amen grace and peace be to you in the matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ us yet after another sunday god has given us this opportunity to unite together to praise god and listen from his word today's theme is faith is the beginning of a pilgrimage faith is the beginning of a pilgrimage as i was going through the dictionary meaning of what the what uh, does the mean uh, meaning of what is the meaning of a pilgrimage it says the dictionary meaning says a journey especially a long one made to some sacred place as an act of religious devotion again it says any long journey especially one undertaken as a quest for a uh, a devotee uh, uh, for a uh, for a god by a devotee to pay homage if we carefully think a person who wants to be with the lord who wants to see his uh, or her god makes a journey and this whole process is called pilgrimage if you have come across through this book or movie called the pilgrim's progress the writer of this story is john benyan and that he meets the lord in the celestial city so that is also called the pilgrim's progress we all are uh, in one sense we can say that we all are pilgrim because our destiny our goal is not to stay in this world permanently the things that are heavenly that is our main purpose we might be doing so many things presently maybe working somewhere doing our home activities domestic things but remember what all we do in all these things our main purpose is to go near to god and that is to go to the celestial city christian journey for and savior from that day on our journey begins and till we die we walk on, on our faith in today's lectionary uh, actually um, it was the first lectionary of the old testament isaiah chapter 35 verse 3 to 10 and verse 10 it reads and those the lord has rescued will return they will enter zion with singing everlasting joy will crown their heads gladness and joy will overtake them and sure. sorrow and seeing will flee away so what does it means it says that there is a journey the pilgrim is on the journey and we all as a as the pilgrim we are in the process of journeying somewhere but uh, this journey is not something which is very comfortable this journey is going to be sometime tough sometime we may feel lost sometime difficulty enter into when we finish this journey there is going to be zion we will have joy we will have crown of life there are two narrative stories that we have read from the new testament from first is from the acts of the apostles and the book of the acts of the apostles is a narration of uh, how the apostle of jesus christ they spread the gospel but they went on preaching about the lord and this narration today's scripture which we have read 
from Acts chapter 16, 25 to 34, here we can find the story of Paul and Silas. The previous uh, verses of this passage, if you can care, if you read it carefully, you can find that Paul and Silas, they went to Macedonia. And this is the district of uh, the greco roman state. And they went to a place called the Philippi of uh, Macedonia. And there they, uh, they came to know about a girl, slave girl, who was, uh, uh, who was in the bondage of the evil spirit. No doubt she was saying some fortunes. And because of that, the owner of that girl, they were getting profit out of it. But no doubt she was affected with the evil spirit and she was tormented by the spirit. And when this spirit continuously saying one thing to Paul and Silas about, uh, uh, about their belonging or about uh, they belong to uh, the Lord, they are proclaiming about the God Most High. Uh, very, uh, we can see in this passage it is written that he rebuked the evil spirit in the name of Jesus and that girl was freed. She was free from the evil forces. And from that day onward, she did not say any fortune to uh, for her master. And when her, when her master saw them saw, saw her, that uh, she is not telling any fortune and uh, she is not of any use to uh, the master, that time Paul, uh, that time she seized, he, he seized Paul and uh, Silas and they to present them before the authorities. The masters, they accuse them with false accusation, saying that these are the people who are disturbing our city. These are the people who are against our cults, custom and culture. They are Jew indeed. And that time the crowd and silence. If you read the following verses, it is written, they were presented before the magistrate and they were stripped, beaten down with rods, and uh, they were thrown into prison. They were placed in the inner cell of the prison. And it is written that uh, their, their feet were uh, fastened with uh, stocks. In Oriya translation, if you read, it is written, Horikato, means it is such a log which was bound, uh, which was fixed with their, uh, uh, their feet, like, for example, if suppose this is a wood, piece of wood, then there will be a hole round here and their feet will be inside that hole. And uh, uh, surrounding the hole, there must be some something like piercing element, some nails. And if Paul and Silas uh, would be interested in uh, moving around, then, the, and then certainly this nail will be piercing their body and the blood out of it. So in this situation, when they are when they are in prison, their clothes are torn down. They have been harassed in the public, and very specially, they are clubbed with the chains and locks at midnight. If I and if we were there in their situation, I do not know how our reaction would have been. Lord, we were doing your ministry. We were preaching about you. Why this struggle has to come on our way? Maybe some of us, we may also stay or uh, um, question God of, you should not have done this. We sh you should have paved a way for us to escape. But at midnight, if we read verse 25, it is written, Paul and Silas were praying and they were singing hymn to God. Even in the time of their struggle, they were praying and they, and they were singing. In the time of difficulty, as of difficulties, and even in that time, it is because very easy to sing praises to God when we are happy, when we are the of the prisons were shaken. All the prisoners' doors were opened and everyone's chain was loosened. So there was very much power in praising the Lord. Paul and Silas, they were exercising a great power in the, 
in the prison singing praise to God in the time of their difficulties. When we praise God, we create energy. We create, we invoke the presence of God and we invoke his intervention into our problem. So it is our duty. It is in one way we can say that whenever you think that you are struggling, whenever you think that uh, you are going through difficult pain, you are not able to bear. Praise God. And there we will see miracle of God. Joshua chapter 6 verse 1 to 27. There also we can find the same without any war, the wall fell down and they could enter into the city. I would like to say this morning that there is praise, there is, there is power in praising God, when we praise God. And uh, their, uh, their, their chains were loosened and they were free. The gates were opened. It was not only the chains of Paul and Silas, but it is written, whoever was listening to their praises in the prison, their bond or their chains were also uh, loosened. It was open. On people who are around us. And when the jailer of that place, he saw that uh, the doors are opened and now the, there was it, the prisoners must be must have uh, gone away and he suspected that if the authority will come to know about this incident they are going to kill him or maybe they will torment him in such a way that he may not be able to bear those things and that's why he tried to kill himself but Paul and Silas they said to him that don't harm yourself but we are because we are still here we have not run from this place they had every opportunity to run from the prison, but they did not do anything to defame the name of the Lord. That means to say they did not give people the opportunity in that place. In Philippi, they will say that Christians are the one who break the law, who do not obey the law or the, those, those who act against the government. But though they had the opportunity, they stayed there in an example, with an, uh, to be an example that uh, they are not doing something unlawful. And by seeing this, when Paul and Silas, they said these things to this person, that time he is saying, and uh, he is bringing the lamp, see, uh, supposing that they are really there or not. And when he came, he asked them, he bent down to them and he asked them, what must I do in order to be saved? In order to be saved. Our life can have an impact on people, can have an impact on people to know the Lord. How the jailer in this place is asking to Paul and Silas that what must I do in order to be saved? And that time, Paul and Silas, they are saying, believe in the Lord Jesus. It is not only you, but your whole household will be saved. God wants not individual salvation, but the salvation of our family. So we should always remember this and we should, uh, pray, we should continue to uh, bring this message of salvation to our family members also. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. The same person, the jailer who was instrumental in bringing them to the jail, or maybe he uh, he clubbed them with chains. He is now he is now um, he is now washing their wounds and helping them to recover, setting food before. household they were baptized the second story is mark chapter 10 46 to 52 
and in this story we read about the popular character we have all known about him bartimaeus as jesus uh, as uh, um, jesus was coming from jericho and jericho is a place which was not a jew city but it and a large crowd was following jesus during that time that means to say that jesus was mindful about both the jews and the gentile his salvation was universal and uh, when this person who was a blind man bartimaeus was there sitting in the road because during that time those days if someone is a blind person they are uh, they were they used to be dependent on others somebody should carry them somebody should lead them and his past situation also was pathetic and when he came to know about jesus he that he will be passing through that time he is saying jesus of nazareth he is saying jesus son of uh, david have uh, mercy on me jesus son of david have mercy on me i used to wonder what made bartimaeus to say jesus son of david because bartimaeus was not a ordinary blind man i believe that he had the knowledge about the coming of messiah because according to the prophets it was uh, the david and uh, bartimaeus knew that jesus is not the ordinary person he is the messiah so he indirectly believed in the messiahship of jesus he indirectly believed that he is from god and he believed in the promise of god and that's why he is saying jesus son of david have mercy on me have mercy on me and when he was saying this many people around him try to rebuke him try to stop him be quiet don't do anything don't shout in this way this is not appropriate but uh, bartimaeus is not listening to anyone if you have a real burden in heart if we have a real burden in heart nothing can stop us from drawing near to god nothing can stop us to become close to god like bartimaeus had because he all he wanted was he wanted to be healed he knew that once jesus will go away from this place i will not have opportunity and that's why with the best that he can cry out he is crying out to the lord and he is stop us from crying to the lord our uh, we may sometimes say that this is the reason because of that i am not able to get near to god no reason is an excuse because i would say that in order to draw near to god cry on to god we have to we have to try our best and jesus stopped there and said call him because jesus was filled with compassion on him in matthew chapter 14 14 to 21 if you read there also you can find whomever jesus is healing it is because of a compassion and it is because of their faith that he is healing and that time when jesus called him bartimaeus he came to jesus throwing his cloak aside maybe he must be uh, wearing some uh, uh, some clothes or maybe some uh, garment he must be covering himself and he knew it is not easy for him to go near to jesus with this covering because he may stumble somewhere and he just threw it we are all uh, we all are able to see with our eyes but some and we are able to run to a place by focusing on the place but imagine someone who is blind and who is not able to uh, see anything and, and that person is running how he must be running how pathetic it must be and when he removed his cloth cloaks it is a representation that uh, he set aside everything that was and hind- that was a hindrance that was uh, maybe a stumbling block to me go thinking that is stumbling block before uh, uh, us and god 
let us remove those things let us uh, stay away from those things hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 also says the same thing that the sin that easily comes near to us that easily uh, binds us be away from those kind of uh, sin and he removed his cloak and went near to jesus and after going near him what do you want me to do for you and that time he saying that uh, i want to see he was focused on what he was int- intending to let us be focused when we pray to god and jesus said it is your faith he, he got the sight we have heard the two stories the story of paul and silas in the prison and the story of bartimaeus both this story had uh, has a sad reality that is suffering because paul and silas they were suffering in the prison and uh, bartimaeus being a blind man also was begging and having his living and he was indeed suffering he was not able to live a normal life second thing this story is common is both and both of them had a believe uh, believing uh, so both of them uh, the a character they believed in god for example it is uh, paul and silas believed god in the time of their adversity and even bartimaeus also believed in god when he was still suffering believed in god had faith in god both these stories we can see they acknowledged the to the 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 uh, they had the knowledge of god paul and silas knew that god is able to save them and god had been saving them and uh, bartimaeus also knew that jesus is the son of uh, david and finally both these stories you can see liberation follows redemption follows it is paul and silas who believed in the lord jailer who believed in the lord and they were saved bartimaeus also believed in the lord and he was saved the journey is the same it was not only same for them but it is same for all, for all of us who are believing the lord we all have a sad story or a very difficult reality of suffering in our life that we cannot uh, deny we also have a god who is trustworthy it is our turn that we also be filled with the knowledge of god and have faith in god because in this journey without faith we cannot make this journey possible we go or we live with our with the eyes of faith and not with the eyes of sight not because we see things happening we believe in the lord no because we know that the lord is good and he is able to do that's why we have faith in him and finally i would like to say liberation is vital part of our journey god is going to certainly intervene in the lives of us so that we will be, we will be free from all the things that we are suffering now and we will praise god for his mercy in our life may our faith continue to become our testimony may our journey of pilgrimage lead us into the kingdom which is above may god bless each and every one of us amen